It was an election that Malaysia's government never expected to lose. But in May, after more than 60 years in power, the ruling party was thrown out. Now Malaysia's former Prime Minister Najib Razak faces charges of money laundering, abuse of power and criminal breach of trust. I'm Marianne Jolly. On this episode of 101 East, we speak to Najib Razak and ask what went wrong. Najib Razak was born into a political dynasty. He entered politics while in his 20s, rising through the ranks to take the top job in 2009. But his political career was plagued with scandal and allegations of corruption. The murder case of Alton Tuya Sharibu, a 28-year-old Mongolian translator whose body was blown to bits in the Malaysian jungle, has just about everything. Her death was allegedly linked to a corrupt defence deal at a time when Najib was the Minister for Defence. 101 East covered the case in 2015. As a result, I was banned from the country. I'm being deported from Malaysia. I'm being escorted by um, about five customs agents and a man in military outfit. But it was the world's biggest financial scandal that would bring him down. Shortly after becoming Prime Minister, Najib set up a sovereign wealth fund, 1MDB, with the help of a young Malaysian entrepreneur, Jolo. $4.5 billion was allegedly siphoned out. Jolo gained a reputation for extravagant parties with celebrities, private jets and super yachts. Back in Malaysia, Najib's wife Rosmar reveled in a life of luxury with designer bags and jewels. By the general election of 2018, public anger against Najib and his party thrust a newly united opposition into power. Yes, certain is my uh, fault. I accept the verdict of the people. Najib's private residences were raided by police who confiscated $240 million worth of luxury goods. There were 284 boxes containing handbags and there were 72 bags containing cash, jewellery and watches. Today, Najib faces almost 40 charges of money laundering and abuse of power. His wife, Rosmar, faces 17 charges of her own. The 1MDB scandal is being investigated by six different countries, including the Department of Justice in the United States. Mr Najib, yeah. very Jolly. Yeah. Very nice to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Please yeah. take a seat. Thank you. Mr Najib, thank you for joining 101 East. Um, to begin with, what was your reaction the night of the election? And, and why do you think the Malaysian people decided after almost six decades they wanted a change? Basically, we lost for two main reasons. One, we lost because of the um, false promises made by the opposition, uh, promises uh, which they themselves concede today. They have conceded very openly that uh, they made the promises because they thought they were not going to win. And of course, the other one is we lost the propaganda war. Uh, you know, the um, vilification of me as a prime minister then, as well as the party. Um, it was a perfect storm, you know, that led to the end of uh, Barisan national rule in the country. But let's go to some of those 
propaganda um, claims that were made, that you say were propaganda claims. I mean, what do you say to those who accuse your government of having been a kleptocracy, of having been involved in one of the biggest heists the world have, has ever seen? You know, the alleged misappropriation of $4.5 billion from the country's sovereign wealth fund, 1MDB. Well, first of all, um, uh, it's not true. Uh, that uh, in our government was a, a kleptocratic government because um, the main point was that uh, I returned uh, more than $620 million back. You know, they kept on accusing me of uh, receiving a huge sum of money, but uh, they forgot to mention that the bulk of the money was returned uh, four months after the general election. But Mr Najib, just going to your personal accounts, that money that flowed into your account in um, 2013, that came directly from a, an account in Singapore linked to um, a, a, a very close business associate of Jolo. How do you explain that? Okay, there were two main sources uh, that came into my account. One was a direct contribution from the Ministry of Finance of uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, that has been proven in terms of wire transfer. But according to the United but, okay. States Department of Justice report, that money originated in an account um, controlled no, no, no. by JOLO, and then it went into the Saudi account, and then it no, flowed no, no. to your account. There are two. One was established, it came from the Ministry of Finance, Saudi. Uh, that was also confirmed by the DOJ report. If you put yourself in my position, when King Abdullah, the late King Abdullah, committed to support me, I assumed that everything was uh, going to be done in a proper way, and I would not have any knowledge of who owns the fund. But you were the Prime Minister of this country. You were the Minister for Finance. You were also the Chairman of the 1MDB Advisory Committee. Shouldn't you ha have wanted to know where exactly that money was coming from? Sure, I wanted to know. But after receiving the commitment from King Abdullah and subsequent letters uh, that were sent to me, I assume everything would be fine. Just on that matter, you have um, presented a letter from the Saudi prince gifting you the money, um, but there are serious questions about the authenticity of that letter. Um, how do you account for the fact that the letter from that Saudi prince uses exactly the same phrases as a letter written by a very close Malaysian business associate of Jolo gifting him millions of dollars worth of art. Um, for example, the Saudi prince writes, the gift should not in any event be construed as an act of corruption. I personally do not encourage such practices in any manner whatsoever. And then you've got Jolo's associate, business associate writing to him, all the artwork gifted to you should not in any event be construed as an act of corruption. I personally do not encourage such practices in any manner whatsoever. I mean, what do you say to people who say that these, that letter from the Saudi prince was fabricated, um, in fact written um, to cover up the diversion of funds um, into Jolo and his associates' accounts and in fact into your own account? Well, I, I want to say this, that the... Um only reason why I accepted it because I had assurance you know, from King Abdullah that he would support me. And the subsequent initial donations did come from the Ministry of Finance of Saudi. And I assume that subsequent donations would also come from sources connected to the Saudi. I'm not privy to letters written by Joe Lo in other instances, as you mentioned. Uh, but let the authorities uh, examine it, let them investigate, and if Joe Lo is responsible, or anyone responsible, for siphoning of funds, uh, then uh, they must be held accountable. The question is, when I received the funds, was I aware of the source of money? If the central bank were to signal to me there was something of concern. But Mr. Then Najib, I, would, I, would have I done know where money, it. if I get a cheque from Al Jazeera, 
into my bank account. I know it comes from Al Jazeera. I know the account it comes from. It's got an account number on it. It's not a secret. This came from a Singapore account controlled by Joe Lowe's um, close business associate, a Malaysian man. And, and the United States Justice Department has traced that money back to 1MDB money. But that was subsequent. At that particular time when I received the money, I assume it was a genuine donation. I do not have any knowledge beyond that, please. You're, you've recently been banned from leaving the country. You've been charged with 38 counts of money laundering, bribery and abuse of power. But when you were Prime Minister and a, an investigation cleared you of any wrongdoing, why do you think you were cleared then and you're now facing a long list of serious charges? You must realise that this current government uh, you know, when they were running for office, uh, they had already um, uh, made this political narrative uh, that they were going to take action against me. So, uh, in that sense, they have to fulfill, you know, whatever political promises they made. Leveling charges is one thing, but whether the evidence adduced later on will support the charges, that's another matter. So tell me, what was your relationship with Jolo? Now, my relationship with Jolo was on the basis that he was going to promote, you know, investment from, uh, the, you know, the Middle East. Uh, that would help us ensure that we can achieve a, a good strategic relationship with certain key countries. And he was very close to the royal families, uh, particularly in UAE as well as in Saudi. So I saw him as uh, creating value, uh, you know, that could help us. That was the main reason. But there are six investigations going on around the world into corruption related to 1MDB. What, what does that tell you about what went on? Yeah, there were, there were things that went wrong in 1MDB. But don't stop at just uh, Joe Lowe, but get others involved as well, because there are other international figures who are probably allegedly involved, uh, they must also you know, be investigated. They must also be questioned. Who benefited? Who really benefited from the whole uh, one uh, MDB issue? This is what I would like to know too. Well, some people would say that you benefited. For example, that money, that the $620 million that you returned um, back into the account of Joe Lowe's close business associate in Singapore, $27 million worth of that was, was used to purchase a 22 carat pink diamond pendant for your wife. What do you say in response to that? As far as I'm concerned, um, there was a gift um, uh, uh, made by Sheikh Mansour. And for an international audience, could you please explain who Sheikh Mansour is? Sheikh Mansour is the brother of the Crown Prince, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zahid. They call him MBZ. And uh, uh, we know that uh, Joe Lo was a close associate of Sheikh Mansour and the others in uh, UAE. But, but this was along, a gift from no, no, Joe Lo no, 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 and no, no, no. the... Let, let me just finish that, please. There was uh, a gift given by uh, Sheikh Manso, uh, but subsequently, uh, my wife uh, did not receive it. Uh, so that's a matter of dispute, what's happened to the big diamond. But let the authorities investigate. Let's but the not Department of Justice, the United States Department of Justice, traces um, that money to the purchase of that pink diamond pendant and they have conversations between the jeweller, um, your wife, um, Jolo, clearly uh, giving evidence that he bought your wife a $27 million pink diamond with 1MD money. No, as far as I'm concerned, when it was uh, presented initially to me, it was presented as a gift from Sheikh Manso, okay? If I knew it was coming from one energy money, I wouldn't accept it at all. But Mr. Najib. Who would know where it came from? Who paid for it, you know? We wouldn't know. Given that your annual official income is less than $70,000 a year, were you not concerned that this was gonna look really bad? There's a culture in the Middle East 
that uh, expensive presents uh, are given. But $27 and, and, but million. Nobody dollars, knew the value. We didn't know the value of the money, okay, or the present. And I can tell you... They, but your they wife did know the value of it because she'd been with Jolo to the jeweller and, and looked at this, tried it on. There are, uh, there's records of all of this. Um, how do you account for the fact that she didn't know or you didn't know the value of this pink diamond? I really didn't know the value of the pink diamond. Uh, I mean, there could be some degree of uh, estimation of the value. But mind you, as uh, head of government, we have received expensive presents from other monarchs in the region. Uh, and that is their culture. And that culture is still going on. And I do know that you know, in other countries, of course, there is a regulation that you have to declare presence. But in Malaysia, there is no regulation. Well, I understand that there is. No, there no, is a, there, if, you, if a politician in this country receives mm. a gift worth more than 120 US dollars, then they have to declare it. No, That's no, no. according to the Malaysian no. Anti-Corruption Commission. There is, there is no law relating to gifts from uh, dignitaries from other countries. Because I do know that uh, my, my predecessors also receive excess, expensive presents. But uh, there is no uh, regulation for it to be declared or handed over to the government. Let's go to another uh, member of your family, your stepson, who is a close friend of Jolo. Um, around 2012, more than $200 million from 1MDB funds, allegedly, was transferred into his Singapore account. Um, he went on to purchase a $35 million condominium in New York, a $17.5 million house in Beverly Hills, and a $41.8 million London townhouse, and fund a Hollywood blockbuster, Wolf of Wall Street. What did you make of his newfound wealth, given that he'd only had a couple of jobs in banks. He'd never produced a film in, uh, previously. He had no experience in that world. What did you make of his newfound wealth? He's always been uh, a movie buff, even though... We, and, and, and let me just finish it, please. He, he's always been a movie buff, and his ambition was really to go into the movies. So when it happened that... Uh, and, and when we visited Abu Dhabi, uh, MBZ, uh, Mohammed bin Zayed, uh, told him in my presence that we are going to invest in your movies. Okay? So we assume that uh, whatever investment is going to come from uh, Abu Dhabi. So as but, far as I'm concerned, is... it was a commercial arrangement. Yes, but I mean, he's bought how many, like almost a hundred million dollars worth of property around the world. That's not funding a movie, that's funding a lifestyle. Where did he get that money from? The United States Department of Justice alleges that that money came directly from 1MDB. Well, everybody assumed that uh, the money was uh, coming from the UAE side. Again, uh, when you are being presented with that sort of offer, you, you cannot look beyond it because you wouldn't know. You just assume that the money's come from uh, the, you know, the, the people who want to invest. But isn't it important as a Prime Minister of this country to know where the money comes from so that you know that you're not going to eventually be sure, compromised? Sure. So why didn't, I mean, it no. seems to me that you're constantly saying you don't know where the money came from, that yet at the same time, 1MDB was going into massive debt. No, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I didn't know, I really didn't know it was 1MDB's money because Mohammed bin Zayed, the Crown Prince said, we were, we are going to invest in your stepson's movie. So that do you was now, his statement. Do you now acknowledge that it must have been 1MDB money, given that the US Department of Justice has moved to seize your stepson's properties and he's also made a settlement of $60 million? Um, do you now accept that he was the beneficiary of 1MDB money? As far as I'm concerned, it was civil settlement and there is no admission of guilt. That, that is the position, because if you think that it was settled because it's one NDB, it presumes that he had knowledge of the money coming one. He had no knowledge. And I know 
for sure that if he had knowledge, he wouldn't have accepted it. He accepted it because it was a loan by the, by the Abu Dhabi family to him, especially from uh, the Crown Prince. What, do you, what would you say to people who say they don't believe that? that you're actually, you're covering it up? No, I mean, I mean in all honesty, that, that's the truth. I mean, I mean, I cannot, ex I mean, there's nothing I can do if people don't believe it, but that's the honest truth, because uh, my track record as Prime Minister, uh, I can stand by it, because this country has developed by leaps and bounds uh, during my tenure. Just going back to when the police can, raided... Can we... Uh, we're supposed to talk about the economy. We are oh. going to, but there's just no, no, a couple no, you're, of more. You're talking too no, much no, no, about this. But no, listen, no, there are just a couple of other allegations that I no, do no, need to. No, no, I don't want to talk too much about it. I've been not talking. Well, about I tell you, I do want to ask you about your decision. Your, you know, you have recently called for the reinvestigation of several high-profile murders to be to be reinvestigated. That you know, yeah. people say that you're. Yeah, okay, okay, right. Yeah, yeah. You can ask that, me that. That you're. I know you're in. very fond of this subject. Yeah. I know that. You yes. Well, you've recently called for the reinvestigation of several high-profile murders that many say you are linked to. The murder of Alton Tuya Sharabu in 2006, Hussein Najadi in 2013, and Kevin Moraes in 2015. Why didn't you reopen those cases when you were Prime Minister? Put it this way, it went through the courts. You know, in the case of Alton Tuya, went through the court at the highest level, the federal court. So I have been cleared entirely by this legal process. And if you ask the then chief police of Malaysia, he will, he will uh, um, testify, he will verify that I had no involvement whatsoever. I was deported from Malaysia in, in June 2015 while filming a story about the murder of Alton Tuya Sharabu. Why did you have me deported from Good this thing. country? We deported you. You're a nuisance. Because as far as I'm concerned, making lies, fabricating lies, is not something that we want to tolerate in this country. But I wasn't but fabricating I was not, lies. No, no, I was no. actually seeking an interview with you. I, was, I have no political agenda in this country. I was just trying to understand what yeah, the truth was. The way you've been asking is as though in your mind I was already involved. I Not at told all. You, I was I saying have to nothing to do with Alton Tuya. Nothing. So to just do. because I was filming a story about Alton Tuya's murder in this country, that was the that, reason that was to decided deploy. by the authorities. They don't want things to be stirred up in this country. I leave it to them. We understand that I'm that directive concerned. came directly from the Prime Minister's office. Your well, office. Well, I am not party to the decision, but as far as I'm concerned. I am totally, totally innocent of the Altantuya case. Absolutely. Um, the the one MDB. Can scan we go to the economy? Please? Oh, well, Look, just, you've spent well, so much thing, of this time. Just, Otherwise, I'm going to walk out. Okay, just one thing. No more, though, no more. Please. You know, many people say. <laughs> no more. All right. Okay. That's it. Li I'm listen, done. Okay. If you want to talk about economy, I'll sit down. Think, well, we I can talk so about. Come on, you're not being fair to me. You know, if you want to ask about the economy, what I mean, I you did, are you are right. facing serious charges no, no, in this country, it. and people. Look, I've done I've done my part. No, 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 no okay. I'm, I'm not going to stand anymore. Okay. This. If you want to ask about the economy, I'll talk to you. Okay, we'll, we'll ask about. Let's talk. Given what's happened to you, let's let's talk about yeah. your legacy. Okay, as we'll talk Prime about the legacy. I'm I'm I'm, I'm fine. That's the last question. Okay. We'll talk about the legacy. Yeah. What do you consider to be your legacy as Prime Minister of Malaysia? Uh, I have uh, steered um, the progress of this country. I'm very proud of uh, my achievement, my government's achievement. First of all, in terms of the stewardship of the economy. For six years, we exceeded the growth of the four so-called Asian tigers. Korea, Taiwan, uh, Japan, and Singapore. I'm proud of the achievements that I've achieved. How do you feel about the fact that the 1MDB scandal has, has stained that legacy to a certain extent? I regret, you know, and uh, 
I, I wish there was no one MDB issue whatsoever. Joe Lowe. Thank you. Oh, no, okay, no. Can you. I just ask you about Joe Lowe? Because no, 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 it enough. is important. No, no, no. no, 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 no it is. Enough. Why do you You're think he... No, 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 no. Why... No, no, no. Just you... He's, okay, but, but Mr Najib, it is important because people are asking, he has been charged with um, money laundering and he's, he's evading arrest. You're facing arrest, he's not. I think it's really important that you talk about how you feel about that. No, I mean, let, let, the, let them take action against your law. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not in the government now. Let the government pursue with him. That's as I'm concerned. Yeah, but why do you think he is evading arrest? He yeah, hasn't I mean, spoken out in support of me. you. I am not in touch with him anymore. Thank but you. he hasn't spoken out in, in, no, no, in no, support no, of no, you. No, no, please follow him. Please follow up with him. Thank you, you. You want us to follow up with him? Well, do whatever I mean, you need do you to do. Blame, do you blame him for any of this? Look, what, as I said, my position is clear. Yeah, we're I don't know if he's still going to court, so I think yeah. it's better. better yeah, let, let the process of law take its course. I think better. Let it take its course. Take a lot of things. When was the last time no, no, you no. communicated? Okay, thank, you. Okay. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Najib.